Good morning. We can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. To Pastor Bean and Meredith, our sister, Pastor Minister Burns, to all other ministers of the gospel, to our friendship family, good morning and happy anniversary. We would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some very special people that we may have in the house this morning. We call those people our guests. So if we have any guests in the house with this morning, we ask that you please stand and you may share any other information you would like at this time. All guests, please. Welcome aboard SS Friendship, the friendliest ship that has ever known to sail out of Lee County. We welcome you aboard here today. And we hope you take something away from the word, the topic, don't look back. We hope the word would encourage you today to march forward in your walk with God and be encouraged. And to our members, again, happy anniversary. And don't forget what's going on this week and have a blessed week. set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of bays and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger when I consider the heavens the works of thy fingers the moons and the stars which you have ordained what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visited him for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God bless this holy reading and may God add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and certainly the doers of his most holy word. Amen. I'll be reading for you the New Testament scripture from John chapter four, verses one through six. First John chapter four, verses one through six. And it reads, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know, the spirit of God Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of, God, is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in, in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are God's little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Blessed be the reading of God's holy word, hearers and doers. Amen. Amen. 
Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Father, oh Heavenly Father, we are your few children come together. You say, when we come together, say, Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and forever. O most holy, righteous, eternal God, as we come in your presence, O God, you heard all those names that mentioned, all those sick among us. Touch, O God, for you are God. The infirmity of their feeling this hour, even we as we gather in your name, O God, Touch us right now, O oh God. For every one of us has problem. No one exempt from problem. Problem everywhere, all over the world. But as we come this morning at 2030 Palm Avenue, gather in the sanctuary to lift you up and to praise you and to worship you and to magnify your name. Come, sweet Holy Spirit. Come right now and tarry us a little while. Somebody need to hear a word from you. Somebody with a heavy heart and a burdened mind. Somebody need a touch, oh God. Even me, Lord. Touch me right now, oh God, and strengthen me where I'm weak. And build me up where I'm torn down. For all that two foot have to offer is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. But you, God, you come that we have a right to the tree of life. You come and pay the price, oh God. Way back on Calvary, you shed your blood, and you die, and you bury. But early Sunday morning, you got up from that grave with all powers in your hand. That's we come boldly to your throne of grace. Come now, sweet Holy Spirit. Come now, heavenly dove. As we come in your presence, oh God. Give us a clean heart, a right mind to run this race. For you are the author. Finish our faith. Father God, you say, you're going away, but you will coming back. You're coming back for your church. You will coming back for your righteous people. Oh God, when the trumpet sound, and the dead shall rise first, and they that are alive will cut up to meet you. What a day. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Bless the preachmen today. Bless our choir. Bless our musician. Oh God, as we gather in your name, as we gather in your name to praise you and to worship you and to magnify you, for you are God. Bless us now and keep us in your care till we meet again in Jesus. In Jesus, precious holy name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. The blood 
verse again.
it's it's power. Yeah. Thank you. We'll never lose this power. You want to make me cry? Keep singing that song. <laughs> never lose this power. Never the blood that Jesus shed way back on Calvary will never lose this power. When I go sing that song and there's another song, it's two songs, that's one of them, you know what the other one may be. God has smiled on me. Yeah. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before these, your people, to deliver your word, O oh God. We ask now, O oh God, that you be with us, that you guide us, that you're, you allow Ken to take a back seat while you take the lead. Hide me behind your cross, dear God, that I might preach your word, rightly dividing the word of truth, that it may edify some souls, cleanse some hearts, and bring someone closer to you asking, what must I do to be saved? We thank you now, God. Bless me, bless this church and this congregation as we try to do your will and your work. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and glory for it. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To merit this pastor being to my fellow yokesmen in the gospel, Brother Alan Thomas, Brother Billy Thomas, Brother Ken Myers, Brother Michael Faust, Brother Anthony Griffin, thank you for presiding this morning. Amen. To the deacons and deaconesses of this church and officers and members and friends and guests. To my wife, Shirley, uh, I say to you all this morning, good morning. It's a good day. Woke up this morning. God started me on my way. There's a word in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, beginning at verse number 12. You will find these words recorded, verse 12. It's not that I have already obtained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Mike say, therefore, you know what it's there for. Let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. In our Sunday school class this morning, we had a history lesson. And as we look back on history, 
we can find both good and bad. Amen. Lately, it's been more bad than good. Amen. Why is it that bad seems to get more recognition well, well. than good? All right. uh -huh. The only news you see on television is bad news. Amen. We seem to gravitate to bad news. I stopped by today to remind us that good news is coming. All right. I know in a crazy world right now that it seems impossible with shootings in elementary schools and shootings in doctor's office, shootings at churches, the war in Ukraine, politicians who are mindless, gas and food prices going crazy. How can it get worse? No, the question would be, how can it get better? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better is coming in the form of one Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. We are getting ready to celebrate 110 years of existence. Yeah. Amen. There's certainly some history there. Yeah. There's some good, some maybe not so good. All right. I have often been asked the question, if I could change something in my history or something in my life, yeah, yeah. Well, what would it be? At one point, I probably could have rattled off a hundred things just like that. Uh -huh. But as I got older and wiser, yeah, yeah. I knew that the most important and the most significant change for me became before I was born. When Jesus died on Calvary, yeah, yeah. All right. my life took a drastic change forever. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. But when you look, when you do look back on things, things are going to, there are going to be some things that we're pleased with, uh -huh. and there are going to be some things that we're not so pleased with. Amen. Looking back is all about our history. But some should be, some history rather, should be just that, yeah. history. But you will always have those people well, who will be quick to remind you of where you were or who you used to be. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Amen. That history should be stuff we use like, or treat like a piece of paper, wadded up and thrown in a trash can and thrown away. Bill Belichick, the coach of the New England Patriots, after a loss, I'll oh, stop it. <laughs> That's Edmund. Dug a hole, took his team and the game ball, threw it in a hole, covered it up, and said, that game is history. Amen. We are going to move on and forget about that one. All right. All right. On the other side, the good team the Saints. After winning season, after winning season, they had a jazz procession of funeral. And in New Orleans, in a jazz funeral, they go down solemnly, sad. But on the way back, they have a good time. But when they got to the end of the procession, the coach told them, to bring all the trophies and all the accolades that they got during that season. Yeah, yeah. Throw it in a hole and cover it up. Well, right, right. He said, that's history. Amen. Forget about it. Amen. We want to do better next year. All right. yes, sir. Jim Moore, another former Saints coach, mm -hmm. was asked a familiar question during an interview one time. And he responded with a familiar response. If I coulda, woulda, shoulda. Well, okay. The truth is, we spend a lot of time looking back 
at our history for a variety of reasons. Uh Self-ratification, trying to please other people for financial gain or reward, insecure, sometimes just completely a lack of confidence. Uh If we look at it, the truth is God is the beginning and end of our history. Because in Genesis 1, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. And he did something a little further down in Genesis. He created man. He took the dust from the ground, Mm -hmm. formed it, blew breath in it, and man became a living soul. In John chapter 1, the word says, in the beginning was God. Oh, yes. And the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Let's substitute the word with Jesus. Yeah. In the beginning was Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus was with God. Oh, yes. And Jesus was God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And if we ever want a change to play, take place in our life, we should begin and end with God. Amen. Go to him in prayer and ask. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. 1 John 5, 14 says this. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If we really think about this thing, we don't have the power to change anything or anybody. Only God does. But in Acts 1, Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Looking at history is not always a smart thing to do anyway. My high school football coach used to tell us that if you break out and get ahead of someone, don't look back. Put your head down and run as fast as you can. But we all have a tendency to want to look back. It's a natural habit. Someone said, there's a reason the rear view mirror yeah. is smaller than the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh-huh. Y'all missed that. Amen. The rear view mirror is smaller than the windshield because when you're looking back, yeah. what you say? but when you're looking in the windshield, yeah, yeah. your future is brighter and bigger. Yeah. You're going to see more things looking ahead than looking back. So keep your eyes on the prize. But when we look back, it also makes us take our focus on what's in front of us. And sometimes we may get sidetracked or go off the course. We may get so far off course that we become like a car stuck in sand, spinning its wheels and going nowhere. So it's important for us to stay focused on the prize or what's in front of us so we don't get off course. In Genesis 19, God gave Lot and his family a chance to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah before it was destroyed. Amen. Amen. In verse 17, the Lord said to him, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. God was showing him grace and mercy and favor. But the Bible says Lot's wife looked back behind Lot and became a pillar of salt. Understand, we must be obedient to God. When God pushes you forward and past the thing, don't look back at it. It's time 
to move on. One thing I know about history, I know this, Satan and people who are your so-called friends will seize every opportunity to use your history against you. And please don't let me leave out your relatives because sometimes they will be the worst ones. Some of those so-called Christian people who come to church every Sunday. I stopped by this morning to tell you, don't let your friends or your enemies or your relatives or anyone else use your history against you. Some of those same people who spend so much time watching you have some of the same problems that they want to tag you with. Jesus said in the parable, why are you worrying about the speck in someone else's eye? You need to get the plank out of your own eye. Another way to put it is why are you worrying about a skeleton in someone else's cars when you got a whole graveyard in yours? Don't let friends relatives use your history against you. Don't let them rope you into going backwards because it's going to slow you down and make you miss out on a blessing. Instead of letting your history slow you down, use it to perpetuate or elevate your journey to the cross. Don't let your history become an anchor, rather springboard into salvation. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When people start to bring up your history, you can say to them and let them know that you are a new creation and the Lord gives you new mercies every day. You can say, I have a new image. So what you see is God in me, the Christ in me. I do reveal that you once saw is now concealed. I have a new image. Don't get my wrong history. Don't make my history as important aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we need history because we need a measuring stick to give us our progress report, to tell us how we are doing. History has shaped our lives, our country, it has helped, it's also, has also shaped our doctors, yeah, yeah. our lawyers, yeah, yeah. and the state of our faith. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Let's take a moment to look back on some history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Adam and Eve in the Old Testament, yeah. Noah, mm-hmm. Abraham, Moses, yeah. Joseph, yeah. Oh, yeah. David, uh-huh. the three Hebrew boys, Job, in the New Testament, Jairus, the woman with the issue of blood, the leper, the man at the pool of Bethesda, Lazarus, the disciples walking on water, the feeding of 5,000. That history tells me that the God that I serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly great things according to that history. In checking history, I see a God that is not only able to do all things, but to do them well. In checking my history, Brother Curlew, I see a God with the power of transformation. In checking my history, Reverend Thomas, I see a God who is able to save. In checking my history, I see a God with the power of resurrection. In checking my history, I see a God who has the power to save, a God with redeeming power, a God with changing power, a God who in history has changed the lives of many, a God who is the beginning and the end. Let's look at the text. Look how Paul begins this. He says, finally. Now, in most cases, that finally would mean the end. But in this case, finally 
is the beginning. He says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you, it is safe. Paul was trying to explain to them, nothing too hard or nothing that I would not do for you to save you. He goes on to say, beware of dogs. Amen. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. There's always a beware, Sister Monica. There's always a beware. Beware, beware, beware. But the Orthodox Jews used to call the Gentile dogs. But Paul reversed that thing. Now he's at, he telling the Orthodox Jews that they are dogs. Because they're around barking up behind him, teaching false doctrine, which was Paul's reason for doing all of this, because they were trying to mix law and grace together. All right. Paul said, not so. It's by faith that we've been saved, Amen. not by the law. Come on, come on. It's by the blood of Christ Amen. that we are here. So forget about that nonsense. We're going to work on the faith. So in our history, we need to keep that in front of us, especially the right history. Paul also, after, to, after telling him, wants to reveal to him his own personal history. Yes, yes. The beware part was, there are going to be people in your life well. that's going to come with some stuff that ain't kosher. Amen. 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 Who's going to want to see you fall because they've already fallen. Yeah. All right. We like to identify them as non-believers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as believers, we know we serve a God yeah. who can do all things and all things well. The Bible says that Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to to his purpose. Amen. So beware. Amen. Enemies are coming. Amen. But he also says, I have a history too. Yeah. Uh -huh. My history is not so good either. Uh -huh. And the truth be told, we all have a history. Amen. Some of us don't like to talk about our history. Uh -huh. We like to talk about other folk history. Well. We good at that. Well. Oh, yeah. We talk about everybody else history. But the truth be told, you got a history. I got a history. My history was not that good either. Because in my history, I, I used to make every happy hour. In my history, I used to use a few choice words. In my history, I, I did some things that I wasn't so proud of. But also, like I said, you have a history. Amen. My history tells me I drank a lot. I was messed up. But it also lets me know that God picked me up, Deke. Amen. Cleansed me off. In me, I'm a new creation. All things passed away. Behold, all things, all things, it say something, all things have become new. So my history is simply that. It's history. But I look at some more of my history. I used to live in a one-bedroom apartment, Brother Curlew. But God has blessed me with a few more rooms. In my history, I used to have one car. But God has blessed me with two. In my history, I was sick, and the doctor had wrote me off, told my mother there's nothing he could do. But God had a change of plans. But even when you're doing well, people get upset about that. They will take your 
good and positive history and throw, back, throw that back at you, even when you're doing the best you can and not bothering anybody. They will say, child, look at him. He think he all that in a bag of chips. It's not that you may think that you all that, but God thinks you are because you are his child. And when you see it start to happen, don't look back. Friends are going to lie on you, but don't look back. People are going to talk about you, but don't look back. Friends will criticize you, but don't look back. People may dislike you, but don't look back. Family members may scheme on you, but don't look back. People are going to try to get you off course, but don't look back. Church members may turn their nose up at you, but don't look back. Friends will try and take you where you used to be, but don't look back. There have been times in my life where I did not understand why things were happening to me and why things were going the way they were going. But then I remember the word that I like and I use to this day as in Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will. He will. Not you will. Not he will. Not he will. But God will direct your past. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust in Ken. Don't trust, trust in Reverend Griffin. Amen. Don't trust in Reverend Faust. Uh -huh. Trust in God with all your heart. Amen. And lean not Amen. to your own understanding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And let him direct you. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Let people say what they want. At my age and now, I don't really care what they say anyway. Because when I look back over my life and see where God has brought me from, I say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for where you brought me from. I said it before and I said it again. I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But, but, but the master, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lifted me. Yeah, yeah. Now safe yes, am I. What was it? Love. Love. Love lifted me. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem with our world today. Right. We have no love for each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. All we want to do is push each other down. It's time to get off that train, get on the right train, learn how to love each other as God has loved you. Learn how to forgive each other as God has forgiven you. Forget the nonsense. It's not a pity party. It's not your party. It's God's party. And until we get under the rule and authority of God, we are going to struggle. Amen. Stop it. Amen. God wants us to unite. God wants us to love each other. Amen. It's time to get right with God. Commit to God as God has committed to us. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Okay. So you know my history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor, now what? Now what? I may not know much, but I know this one thing. I know that God is forgiver. The Bible tells me that on the day of crucifixion, there was a thief on the cross next to Jesus. He asked Jesus to be with him. And Jesus told him that he would be with him in paradise. Amen. 
That's love. That's forgiveness. That's what I love about Jesus. History is important. That's what Paul was trying to say to us. Jesus has no time restrictions. There's no time limit. Because no one knows the day or the hour when he's coming. So it's timeless. But I would suggest and recommend to you that you get right with him now. Amen. If you don't know Jesus for yourself, you need to get to know him. Amen. But history changed at the cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the blood of Jesus came down. And when people want you to look back at all the negative things in your life. Tell them what the hymn writer penned. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Because it was at the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart. Rolled away. It was there. By faith. I received my sight. And now. I am happy all the day. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But now, but now, but now I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet. Plant my feet. Plant my feet on solid ground. Why? Because Jesus did something for all of us. One day on a hill called Calvary, he walked that hill with an old rugged cross. Got nails plunged into his feet. Nails plunged into his hand. Died upon that cross. But here's the best part. He stayed there three days, three nights. But early, 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 early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. There's joy at the cross. There's peace at the cross. There's healing at the cross. There's love at the cross. There's joy at the cross. Joy, joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. That's why I love Jesus, because Jesus woke me up this morning, started me on my way, allowed me to dress myself, allowed me to get here safely. I love Jesus for Jesus don't have a history that's like your history. <laughs> Jesus loved me. Jesus loved me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. When things look bleak, press. When money is funny, keep pressing. When friends turn their back on you, keep pressing. When you don't seem love, just keep pressing. Yeah. When family members dip out on you, keep pressing. Yes. When your house don't do and you don't know where the money coming from, keep pressing. Yes. Press toward the mark of the high call of God because Jesus is able to supply all your needs according to his riches. Amen. So when things look good, are not looking so good, don't look back. Because yeah, yeah. Jesus is ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning, friendship. You can now give your tithes and offerings electronically through a link on the internet, a text to give number, or through a mobile app called Give Plus. 
Now for those who are comfortable giving in the old school way of writing a check or money order, you can still do that by sending a check payable to Friendship Baptist Church at the address listed on screen. But for those who would like to use a safe mobile app, a secure web link, or to easily send a text to give your tithes and offerings, this system is now available. For more information, please view the videos that follow or click the link below to send an offering online. In today's fast-moving world, smartphones are integrated into our lives. We bank and shop on our smartphones, and many of us want to give with them too. Giving to the church with a text message is fast, easy, and versatile. With Give Plus Text, you can make a weekly offering or respond to a special appeal in just seconds. To give, you enter the church's 10-digit Give Plus Text number and the amount you wish to donate. Then, send your text. The first time you contribute with Give Plus Text, you'll receive a secure registration link. Click the link to go to our secure website where you'll enter your contact and payment information. Tap Process when you're done. After you've completed your registration, a text reply will verify that your gift has been received. We'll also email you a receipt. For future giving, you simply send a text with the amount you wish to give and it will process automatically. You can also choose to make your gift recurring. Give Plus Text is that easy. Register, give, repeat. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Text and the other electronic giving options we offer.